Uh, appreciate you guys being here. Um, pretty um, uneventful, uneventful morning for us. Um, five young men that we um, uh, knew we were going to sign, you know, signed, no issues, got them in when they uh, said they were going to get in. And uh, it's good to, uh, you know, add to the, add those, these five to the 20 that, uh, uh, that we had already signed in December, um, and um, you know we we really fulfilled all the all the needs that we were looking for. You know, in terms of when um, uh, I put together um, the list and what we were shooting for, we really hit the the target for what we wanted. You know, in terms of five defensive linemen, you know, four defensive backs. Um, two linebackers, um, three running backs, two wideouts, six offensive linemen, uh, two tight ends, and a quarterback for for 25. Um, so with those with those 25, um, you know, 14 uh, on offense. I mean, uh, 14 on offense, 11 on defense. Um, that'll put us at uh, 79 scholarships um, as we head into the fall. And, uh, uh, you know, we're going to look to add, um, you know, some more uh, walk-ons. We have a few that uh, – four that uh, we know of right now, you know, that are going to come, but we're still looking for uh, a couple more offensive linemen, receiver, linebacker, DB, and a punter, uh, which would round out us, give us uh, 26 total. Uh, walk-ons for 105, you know, as we go to camp. So from a roster uh, management, you know, standpoint, um, we're going to be continue to work on that, but feel good about uh, where we are, but feel really good about um, all these guys. You know, uh, Tui, you know, was a young man out of um, Gateway High School, tremendous athlete, uh, plays both sides of the ball, was a tight end. Uh, linebacker, uh, basketball player, um, you know, got to play linebacker for us. Um, like I said, very athletic, very productive uh, guy that uh, very versatile, you know, the kind of guy that you that you like, you know, who who's got that versatility, who's got that athleticism, uh, who's made plays on both sides of the ball. But like I said, he's got to be a defensive guy, great family. Um, had a chance to, to watch him play basketball uh, last week, and you just see the athleticism. He's not a basketball player, but uh, uh, he moves well and does the things that you like, you know, physical. Um, and then um, Devontae, uh, Devontae Houston from down in uh, Roanoke, Alabama. I mean, you just look at the productivity you know, that he had this past year, I mean, 2,800 yards, all-purpose yards, 33 touchdowns, you know, very, very fast, um, quick, uh, got hurt his junior year, um, played there as a freshman, and uh, that's a pretty good school down there, Hanley High School, um, and, um, you know, very productive, uh, great kid, you know, like I said, can, can really run, can not only carry, run the ball, but also is a good receiver coming out of the, um, coming out of the backfield. Um, but uh, very, very fortunate to be able to, uh, to land him. Um, Durante Jones, young man from Mays uh, High School down there, uh, right outside of Atlanta, right off of 285. Um, very versatile, you know, could be a corner, could be a safety. Probably going to look at him more as a as a safety, uh, but tough, you know, physical, um, a leader, uh, you know, as a guy that uh, uh, has a mindset that uh, he knows what he wants to accomplish, and he's going to go about doing it. Um, so again, really liked the way he he played physically, liked his length. Um, so we're very happy that he decided to join the uh, join the family. Um, guy that we were 
<clears throat> looking at to try to get in at mid-year, uh, just weren't able to get that done. Trey Wortham, um, defensive back. Um, again, when you get involved with uh, uh, the junior college, you know, there's always the, they graduate, but then you got to make sure that there's enough credits that can transfer into a degree program here. Um, and Trey had, um, you know, graduated, but because of the, you know, we don't offer some of the curriculums that maybe other people do. Uh, so he has to, he's taken a couple courses right now just to finish it, to, to have the courses he needs to uh, transfer in to, uh, to be eligible. Um, but I was very impressed with him. I don't know if I've seen a guy long, long time, you know, get up and play with the fundamentals and techniques that a uh, young man coming out of the, well, their high school or junior college uh, plays with. You know, he gets up and he plays press coverage and plays physical. Just his fundamentals and technique were really things that stood out and, you know, his ability to make plays and, and to be physical and to run. But, um, you know, he, uh, he was very, very impressive on, on film, and very impressive as a, as a person. Um, thing there is that uh, his uh, junior college coach was a teammate of uh, Coach Perkins you know, when they played in college together. Um, and then the last guy that we had signed uh, was Raymond Young. Uh, he'll be a center for us um, from, from uh, Colquitt County High School down there in Moultrie, uh, Georgia. Same high school as uh, Steve Krajewski. Um, and again, th this is all part of the recruiting um, process is that you know, he's a guy that you watch on tape, you know, just about six foot two, but he doesn't have the length to be a, to be a tackle. So you take a look at his skill set and you take a look at how he moves. And, you know, there was a guy that I just felt, you know, hey, he's got to, he'd go inside and could be an outstanding center. You know, you bring him here and, you know, you redshirt him and you teach him and, uh, you know, when you watch him on tape, he's got all the things you want in an offensive lineman, and, and it's hard to find. It's hard to find centers, you know, because most of the time in high school, the coaches, if they're the best athlete up front, they're going to play him at tackle. And um, so again, he's a guy that uh, um, you know has 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 the abilities that we were looking for um, to play as a uh, offensive center. So, uh, I mean, all in all, I thought that uh, our coaches did an outstanding job of recruiting. Uh, thought our players did an outstanding job of hosting the young men when they came here for their visits. Um, you know, the, um, to be able to have, uh, Again, and again, I thought a lot of it is because of the work that we put in in terms of evaluating and knowing what we were looking for, um, you know, made a big difference. To have 20 signed in December, and then we knew these were the five guys that we targeted that we had left, you know, in terms of scholarships. And uh, they came up uh, a couple weekends ago, and they all committed, you know, during the weekend. And... Um, I don't, know the, I don't know if there's ever been a time in my career where we were done a week, a week before. We didn't even have any visits and weren't concerned about recruiting that last weekend of um, the recruiting period. I don't know if that's ever happened. So, um, you know, I think that's a, that was a good thing because I think, like I said, we know what we want. We know what we were looking for and the guys who fit. Uh, what we wanted and so you know with this group of 25 there's no doubt that we've upgraded ourselves uh, uh, significantly so now it's just a matter you know had a chance to go see a couple of the guys you know that last week I think I logged more miles in one week driving than I had in about three years but uh, going down through Atlanta to Moultrie to um, Roanoke, back to Atlanta, up to Pittsburgh. I didn't drive that, but to Pittsburgh, and then 
flying over to Baltimore and driving from there all the way up through Eastern PA to uh, Mountaintop and Scranton, Wilkesbury, and then driving back and coming back to the state of Connecticut and come into the state and all of a sudden you stop. You go about a mile in an hour because there was an accident there on 84 last, uh, last Thursday. So there was a few choice words in the car, but, uh, but no, other than that, it was very, it was worth it. And like I said, I like where we're at from a, from a breakdown standpoint in terms of our numbers and um, looking forward to, you know, and the kids that are here already, you know, they've acclimated very, very well and um, just very glad that they're here. And then these guys will come in. Um, the high school guys will come in. Trey will come in a little bit earlier. He'll come in in June um, to start summer school. But these other, uh, the freshmen, they'll, report, they'll come in here on uh, June 14th. They'll have academic orientation on the 15th and 16th, and then they'll start their um, bridge program, six-week bridge program on the 17th, and then they'll be out of here July, I think it's 30th or something, or 29th, and then they'll have about five days before they have to come back and they'll get a break to go home, and then they'll have about four or five days before they have to come back and report to camp. So. And normally, um, you know, newer guys further away from the ball play first, with your offensive line, you're relatively short. Can some of these guys maybe step in and play right away? Is well, I think the two guys, the two guys that would have the best opportunity are, are Sydney and uh, Alex, the ones that are here, you know, right now, and who've come from a junior college, who, you know, physically, you know, have the ability um, to do that. You know, the other guys, um, you know, the other guys, uh, you know, probably going to have to, you know be redshirted. But again, you know, we should have an, you know, and that's really what you want to be able to do. Um, should have enough with the uh, younger guys that we redshirted last year and what we had coming back. And like I said, with Sydney and, uh, you know, Alex, um, we should be, we should be in pretty good shape from that standpoint. But, uh, you know, like I said, it's, um, you know, hard, hard for those guys to come in, you know, and play right away as, as high school guys. Outside of obviously ability, is there a mindset or a personality that you look for when you're recruiting? Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of it was uh, guys that uh, had the kind of personalities that we were looking for. You know, the other thing that, um, that I liked is I thought uh, a lot of these guys were, were leaders, but they were also guys that uh, – you know, have had to overcome, you know, some adversity maybe. You know, it has it, not everything. They weren't enabled and entitled guys. And uh, they're guys that uh, worked when you talk to their high school coaches and then when you had a chance to get around them um, and you just see them and, and what they do, um, they're, they're my kind of guys, you know. Um, they have the work ethic, the character. Um, they know, like I said, they know how to persevere. Um, that was to me is the biggest. And, they're, and they're, the thing is, is they're, they're athletic and they, they have the ability to run. You know, got to have guys that can make plays and you got to have athletes. Um, and again, I just, I just think that we spend, we spend a ton of time you know, evaluating, um, you know, these guys and in a lot of different areas and uh, having the opportunity to go see them play uh, firsthand or see them do something athletically, I think is, is big. And then also, you know, being able to get some of these guys that we, you get them to camp um, and you get a chance to work with them. But uh, you can usually tell you know, about all these kids, because when you ask them to do something, you know, they, they get it done. You know, they don't uh, procrastinate. They don't put it off. Uh, I mean, all the kids that came in at mid-year, they're on top of it. The kids that we signed in December, getting their applications done, getting all the stuff taken care of, it's done just like that. And these five kids that we signed and they committed, boom, the applications were done within a couple days, you know. So, you know, those are the kind of guys that, that I want to be around and uh, 
want to have as part of our, our program. So, and then again, you bring these kids in mid-year and you see them already after a couple weeks and you can tell that, you know, you made the right decision to have them part of your family. You've obviously had success over the years with guys who like weren't big name recruits with all kinds of big offers, but turned into like really good players. I was wondering in your experience, what's the biggest reason that some of these guys go under the radar um, when they turn out to be? You know, well, you know, we don't call we don't call recruiting services up and say, hey, make this guy a three star. You know, I, I don't I don't have I don't want those relationships, you know, because I don't want to know what I don't want people to know who I'm recruiting. Really, it's harder these days with the social media. Um, a lot of people just don't do their homework. You know, a lot of people don't do their homework. And um, and again, it's it's more to it than because there's some guys that might be really good players, <clears throat> but don't have the care. I don't want to have anything to do with them. I don't have the work ethic. You know, it's a. It's just guys that you go and try to <clears throat> evaluate. And, you know, the thing is, there's, there's guys that come on uh, in their senior year, uh, <clears throat> that come on in their senior year because uh, maybe they haven't played a lot or <clears throat> they had a growth sport and, um, and now they've got to, uh, their body finally catches up to them. But that, the whole thing is, to me, it's just, it's evaluating. You know, you just got to evaluate. You take the time to sit down and watch four and five films, game, the whole game. And, uh, and again, finding these guys that, you know, that play multiple sports. You know, I saw um, uh, Brandon Nemensky the other day, and he's already filled out more. Nick Harris, these guys already put on weight. And, um, and, and again, they have, the, they have that work ethic that you want. And so, it, like I said, there's, there's more to it than, <clears throat> than stars and, and all those sort of things. And to me, it's just a matter of uh, evaluating and, you know, doing all the hard work that it takes to find out what's inside of somebody. Because if they don't have it inside of them, it don't matter how talented they are, you know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna get it done. And you obviously have some Um, you know, Ed, I, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather go with, uh, high school kids or junior college guys, guys going into the portal to me, they got issues. They got issues. That's why they're going into the portal, you know, and, uh, you know, I think if you get people that come in that you know have two or three or five years five to play four three to play two two to junior college guys those guys got a little bit more edge to them you know uh the junior college guys because they want to play right now sometimes these guys from the portal um think that they're enabled and entitled to something and you know maybe it didn't work out but you know you didn't stay there and and finish it so moving forward and like this year, I just talked to the coaches about it, the staff about it, and I just, I just didn't, you know, unless, unless I know the guy or our coaches know the guy or we were involved with recruiting them, uh, you know, I don't know if you can get enough information that you need to make, you know, the proper evaluation. You know, I mean, I, I just know that there's some people, they don't even – call around the people to find out anything about kids that are in the portal. And I don't know how you'd ever do, why you wouldn't, wouldn't do that, you know. Um, but, you know, we did it a year ago because it was something that I thought we had to have a need. But after experiencing it for a year, you know, I think that's the whole thing. In life, you always take a look at things and you evaluate things after you do it. I just think it's best for us in our situation that we go the junior college route and we go the um, high school route unless there is somebody in the portal that we were involved with and we can feel comfortable to say, hey, that these guys could fit in here.
Randy, do you still enjoy the experience of going on the road? You were talking about your travel. It sounded like a Johnny Cash song. You know, you've been everywhere. I mean, at, at this point, do you still enjoy that? I and mean, it's a grind. It's a grind. Let me tell you. The, I mean, it, it's enjoyable, but wow. I mean, and the other thing is, this stuff taking helicopters and flying in, that, that is such a joke. You know, these coaches that do that, you know, they want to try to make an impression, and then a year later, you know, that kid's out the door or something like that. I mean, just, I mean, they ought to outlaw that stuff, uh, allowing coaches to take helicopters in. You know, that's such a facade and just showmanship, and, you know, people can say what they want, but uh, that's part of the reasons why we have some of these issues in recruiting, you know. Um, but no, it, it's a grind. But like I said, the enjoyable part is being able to, um, you know, sit down with the families and going in areas. And I mean, the last, the last week I was out, so I go in, leave here Sunday night, flew to Baltimore, stayed there, uh, and then went to see Nick uh, Monday morning. And then I had a flight out of Baltimore to go to Atlanta and then connect in Atlanta to go to Valdosta to go see uh, Raymond. And then um, I was going to get in there probably around, I don't know, 5.30, 6 o'clock to, um, to, see, to see him. And then I had to drive up to LaGrange, Georgia, to then go see Devontae over in Roanoke, Alabama, lose an hour, drive back across the line, gain an hour. Um, so ended up happening is get to Baltimore, wait for the plane to come in and comes in and the pilot comes out, well, we got an issue. We can't take off. So you're sitting there and, you know, it's over an hour delay. So now you're not going to make your connection, you know, so now you get into uh, Atlanta, you get a car and you drive to Moultrie about three and a half hours. Okay. And you get in there now at say 715 instead of six o'clock, spend, I was about an hour and a half uh, in their house. And then, uh, you know, got to drive to LaGrange to get up there. And um, that's another about three hour drive. So it's about 1130 till you, till you get up there. Um, and um, so stay there. And then you got in the morning, you got 30 minutes or so to drive to Roanoke, go there go to Atlanta, see um, Durante, and drive, stop by the Chick-fil-A offices just to say hello to my daughter because her birthday was good, her 30th birthday was going to be Friday, so I had 10 minutes, and I said, you know, stop by and see her because it was right around the corner. Go there, go the, then later, stopped at the original Chick-fil-A on my uh, way to the airport. And uh, right there in Hapeville, right by the airport, um, got on the plane, flew to Pittsburgh, got in there, eight o'clock uh, next day, spent all day around Pittsburgh, went to see Tui play basketball. Next morning, early flights to Baltimore, then drive up through all the way from Baltimore up to Scranton, hit two other schools in Scranton, and then drove back. And then Friday, then Friday, I hit five schools here in Connecticut. Yeah. That was one week. Left Sunday and got, got done 7 o'clock on Friday. That's the life of a football coach during recruiting. And you see why some of these guys Mark D'Antonio, Chris Peterson, you know. But that's what you have to do, you know, because a couple of those guys I didn't get a chance to see in December, Nick and Brandon, so I uh, wanted to go see them, you know, here before the end of the recruiting period. So we don't take the private planes. <laughs>